Okay, good. So this evening we start uh, developing uh, uh, web applications. Now the web technology will be used uh, for us uh, in two different contexts. Uh, the first context, uh, of course, is uh, creating web applications for the interactivity, for the interaction with the users. Uh, we need to create some uh, web front end uh, or uh, web application uh, uh, or that the user can use on their let's say desktop or on their uh, mobile device mm -hmm. um, and uh, we will discover later that the same technologies that we use uh, to build the user interfaces can also can also be used uh, and are very let's say, effective to be used for integration of different uh, server technologies so if we have two different computers two raspberries or uh, a, a desktop and a raspberry and so on and you want them to uh, share data to communicate in your in the architecture of your, of your system one very uh, effective way is to use web technologies for letting machine to machine communication happen hmm? through a protocol that is called uh, rest uh, that we will study in a, in, a, um, in a couple of weeks hmm? so uh, we want to learn the basics we don't need uh, to create very complex web, web applications luckily because the focus is more on the tangible the, on the physical side uh, of the project and so we start with uh, some simple uh, framework hmm? and uh, if you search for what you can do in Python for programming web application you will find uh, many different solutions uh, of different degrees of complexity so first of all in this in the standard Python library you already have a class which is called simple HTTP server okay so it's there's already a simple server embedded uh, in the standard library if you want to do re something really really basic and uh, after that uh, for having something more uh, well, easier to, to use to program there are uh, different uh, frameworks uh, that become more and more complex as we go up on this uh, picture and uh, at the top uh, level we have the Django framework that probably you sometimes heard of which is a very complete framework for building complex complex applications so it's it's all in Python and you can be build a very complex website it, it already has a lot of uh, facilities in that uh, no, it's a, a very powerful framework but it's also complex to use and it's probably overkill to use uh, for simple applications like we need so in this spectrum we chose uh, to use the flask uh, framework which is one of the simple ones uh, uh, in the first year we used cherry pie but then it was too too limited too simple for for our purposes and uh, the advantage of of, uh, of flask uh, is that it can be extended quite easily with the extensions and plugins uh, so we start with something very very simple and then we can extend it quite uh, uh, quite a lot uh, with different uh, extensions where do you find information about flask uh, well uh, the, the main place of course is the website uh, uh, which is this flask.poku.org where you have some introduction and all the uh, documentation docs here the documentation about uh, the, the the different methods uh, and classes in the libraries and there are also some some books available if, if, in, if you are interested actually what we call the flask uh, library is actually composed of, the, of three different uh, ingredients uh, the basic uh, ingredient is this uh, uh, yellow word soig uh, or i don't i really don't know how to pronounce that it looks like or it sounds like a german word but uh, it may be anything and uh, which is a library that does uh, the http server part so this library is actually the web server inside the framework the part of the library that actually responds to the http requests uh, and composes and sends back uh, the http responses and manages all the http connection okay the low level is uh, handled by this library we probably won't have 
nearly any kind of in in interaction with this library on top of this library we have this flask library which is the actual application framework that uh, uses this web server uh, to let the programmer create uh, web pages or web applications and uh, uh, this framework uh, uses uh, another library that is developed by the same people you see that the the domain is the same so it's the same group of people that develop all the three even if they are separate components uh, and this is the templating engine it's called jinja2 and they're represented by this kind of symbol which i honestly don't know whether it has any any kind of meaning in the, as a chinese character i have no idea maybe you can tell me whether it means something or just a, a nice picture um and this part uh, will be used uh, for easing uh, uh, for making it easier to create uh, html pages dynamically so to mix uh, html pages with dynamic content hmm? as we will see today okay these are the three main ingredients um, and uh, they all come down they all get installed if you install the flask package from uh, your pip command line or from uh, uh, from directly inside uh, pycharm hmm? just uh, ensure that your uh, python interpreter includes also the flash module hmm? so you can install that it comes with the version number 0 0.12 this times and uh, and that's all you need and creating a web application with flask is very easy because you have one main python file and in this python file you import the flask class from the flask package so flask here is the name of the class and flask is the package the python package that includes uh, that class and we create an object uh, from this class okay we instantiate an object in you probably know or maybe you're seeing some example that it, it um, in python uh, creating a new object from classes is not done with like you know in java you use, you use the new operator or in c plus plus also use new for creating objects uh, in uh, python you just call the class name calling the class name returns like uh, an object of that class and these are the parameters of the constructor the name in this case so you give your application a name which uh, underscore underscore name is uh, usually the name of the application hmm? that cause this case would be uh, main and the, your you have your application that has been created so the web uh, server or the web application is uh, uh, handled by this app uh, object and what you need to do actually is to run the server hmm? so you create the application and you run run it uh, let it run of course uh, if you only do this uh, the website will be quite empty <laughs> because you don't the the run method doesn't know uh, anything about the actual content that it should serve no? it should publish so uh, but actually with these two lines uh, you already have a web server running on your computer on port 5000 it's a, it's a custom port just accessible from from the internal computer and uh, you can also, uh, already start to use it hmm? so let's let's try to see it practically i get with uh, with pie charms uh, what you can do is to create a new project uh, and uh, you probably notice that one of the different project types uh, is already a flask project okay so PyCharm already knows about the libraries and the setup that you need uh, to create a, a flask project uh, we call them uh, python flask uh, probably which is the name yes of the repository that they prepared for pushing the exercise afterwards so that we already have consistent naming so we, I, we, I give this name of the project and uh, the options here 
for creating this project you see that the whether you want to create it in the global scope or using a virtual environment which is uh, in this case uh, often the uh, a good choice because then when you install additional packages they will they are stored just inside this project instead of being installed for all the computers especially if you have different uh, projects that r that need different packages mm -hmm. but it's also all of this is automatic and uh, inherit all the side packages and uh, we, we use uh, the Jinja 2 template language so actually very simple to set up and if we hit the create button uh, no sorry I use the same name from last year's project so I new <coughs> new projects let's do that let's change the name of the project I forgot to delete the project from last year uh, okay Uh, yeah thank you thank you thanks for noticing that's why i didn't uh, have all the questions here okay so again okay create and i call it in untitled because uh, i'm lazy so flask okay it seems that if you are persistent persistent enough okay so this is the first example of a of the flask application that has been created you see that we have uh, the creation of the app uh, object here and uh, the activation of the web website in the middle we have uh, one function that the creation procedure already injects here that is the definition of one web page okay uh, we have a look a closer look at, at how this page is defined here every web page and uh, but later we will learn uh, to create uh, blocks of web pages in just in one statement but uh, for now let's think that every web page that we want to publish on our website uh, is defined in this way we should define first where the page is published so what is the address the web address the url address at which that page will be published inside, inside the server and this is defined by the route annotation here application dot route and uh, we have a url here a, a local path of the url so it means that this page will be, will be visible at this address so at the root address of the, of the website then we define a function whose goal is to return a string that uh, is the actual content of the page okay so whenever some user connects their browser to this website and requests this uh, address then the flask platform will call this function let it run and the return value of this function will be packaged as the http response hmm? uh, so we have these three two separate concepts which is the address and the name of the page these are separate the, uh, the name of the page is an internal name internal to our, our application that corresponds to the name of the function the python function that we define and then we have the content of the page 
which is nothing more than the return HTML. In this case, like here, we, don't, we are not actually returning an HTML file. We are just returning a, a, a string, um, text string, mm? but the browser will like it anyway. Mm? Later we will change it. So if we run this example, this file here, you see here at the bottom on the console output, it tells you that we are now serving the Flask application called app. and uh, this application is running on this website localhost 127.001 slash um, column 5000 5000 is the port in which it is running if you click here you get a page in the browser with the hello world text in it Okay, so what happened is that the browser actually requested that page from the, the server and you see it here in the console you have the log of all the calls all the requests that that web server has received okay so this web server received actually three requests one is get slash and it was served by that function because slash is a, um, a published address there is mapped to the function hello world and then the browser also asked uh, twice don't ask me why the browser asked twice for the file favicon.ico and we don't have it in the in the website here I, favicon you know that we see we, that is this small a icon that the browser shows uh, on each tab on the page uh, if you want to show your own picture you need to put on the root of your website a file with this name favorites icon but we don't have it so the server the browser requests for it and the server doesn't have it uh, and so it responds with an error 404 final found while the initial hello world page was found and the result was a uh, 200 code okay found, file found and request uh, satisfied hmm? so every request that comes to this server is logged here and it means that every request will call one of the functions that they will that we defined in this module hmm? um, So actually what we are doing here is that we are writing code here in this Python file down the right. All the rest is just infrastructure for, for letting our file being ex executed. So you have the user that in some way clicks or writes an address or clicks on a link. The user browser sends an HTTP request on the specified address 127001 colon 5000 slash and it reaches this HTTP server where the HTTP component handles this request and routes it to the web application the web application calls the, the correct function the right function inside my code so my code is, is being run as a consequence of these steps I, is being run and after that my code will return a string and this string uh, is uh, interpreted as the HTML file to be returned back so my st return string goes back here to the HTTP server and goes back uh, to the browser that then will display it to the user okay so we have a very strange mechanism for the user to call functions inside our code hmm? and these functions are mapped to specific uh, url addresses of course uh, later on we will not be able hmm, to generate meaningful html responses unless we can access some data stored 
somewhere in the database okay so 99 percent of the cases this web application will need some information <laughs> in order to be able to reply otherwise it, it will reply always the same page if it doesn't access any external information so what we learned last week uh, about or this week uh, about the interfacing with databases uh, will also apply here okay so we we'll, we will add this piece later because first we want to focus on delivering web pages but the content of the web page will in many cases come from a database that will run on the same machine where the http server is running okay um before we go on with and implement something just a, a small note uh, we say that uh, the server is running locally on this non-standard port 5000 it means that from the configuration of the flask server only a browser on this very same computer can access that web page that that website if i had a different computer and i want to connect to that website is not possible with the default configuration this is just for development okay if you want another computer to be able to access that website you should publish it not on localhost and not on this port but on a uh, on the public interface of the computer and for doing that you can specify in the run method app.run some parameters like host host 0000 means that uh, the, the website will not be published just on localhost on the local interface but on all the interfaces configured on this computer also the public one and you can change the port to put into the standard value 80 but uh, remember that in, uh, in linux uh, you should be root uh, for being able to open a socket uh, uh, on ports uh, less than one um, 124 uh, 1024 so if you are if you run it uh, as a root user you can publish the website on the standard web port which is port 80. otherwise you can use the 8080 which is usually the, the, <laughs> the second choice uh, whenever you cannot use the the, um, the, the 80 standard and you need also to check that your firewall on windows or on linux at the system level doesn't block port 80 for being accessed otherwise uh, the request will never reach uh, the, the flask server because it's blocked sooner uh, by the by the firewall so you need to configure the, your system in order to be able to publish it at that point uh, everything is open so anybody on the internet could access your website uh, and if you have some bugs in your code uh, it could also uh, do bad things to your machine if you want to publish it uh, well okay not just uh, in uh, by opening everything uh, the recommended way for doing that is uh, using the wsgi standard which is one communication one integration standard between python applications and uh, web servers like apache for example the apache web server has a module which is called mod uh, module wsgi that we can use to run dynamic websites behind the apache web server or there are also other servers so i don't want to go into details now uh, but if you want to publish your website somewhere else uh, there were real users will use it uh, consider one of these uh, configurations there is not much more complex it's just a more safe and secure way of publishing your application because in, in the front uh, you don't have just uh, some python code uh, but you have a real uh, uh, web server that can scale that you can configure you can block requests and so on hmm? okay um, and here, here we have there is some documentation here but it's not clear at all I remember that every time I have to do that, I need to start from the beginning. But maybe later we'll see an example how to do that uh, on the Raspberry, for example. Okay, let's do something practical to learn. Uh, 
remember my stupid project about the uh, wake up uh, uh, schedule and uh, intelligent whatever and uh, so we want to create uh, the application for running it uh, the first idea would be let's say maybe we have two different web pages one is uh, just uh, um, an introduction page a welcome page and another is an uh, about us page so information about it we wouldn't need uh, flask or python for creating these two pages you already did that for your website uh, and you use just html we publish the html on github huh? uh, we want to make it dynamic uh, so for the moment let's keep with these static pages the html the content of the page doesn't change uh, but later we will make it evolve into something more okay so let's start simple and uh, in particular we want to for example to learn about to make these links uh, so that if we click uh, on the name of the project it will link to the about page uh, and if we click back on the name of the project we can go back to the index page and so on and we defined also some addresses here where the pages will appear okay so how should we modify it we can we say that we want to create this page and publish it at the address index.html good so we just have to create a new route slash index.html and we define a new function Is it too small? Yes, it is. Uh, so let me. Did it change? okay so we are defining an index function that needs to return the HTML corresponding to that web page and uh, we can do that for example by using a multi-line string where we put all the web page so we have HTML slash HTML and then we have a head and the body ah in the head we have at least a title slash title and the body will have the for example ambient intelligence h1 slash h1 and then a paragraph of text P and then uh, another paragraph uh, with the copyright symbol slash P So actually we compose a web page as a string 
and we return it from our function we use the multi-line string syntax in order to avoid concatenation let's see if it works we can stop the server uh, remember just a, a minor point we always remember to stop the server running because if you click on run here you will start another web server but since they all run on port 5000 only the first one will reply and the other ones uh, will be will never be reached so you modify something you think you modified it but the, the, the website doesn't work it's not because it's it's because the, the old web server is still running <laughs> so it, it's not like a normal application that it closes after it uh, is being executed it always runs until you close it so you kill it with the right button here so we can run it again okay this uh, hello world is still there but, but if i go to slash index dot html you see that the browser requested this index.html page and uh, the uh, content of this page has been displayed in the browser it's uh, painful uh, because for something so stupid we have to write the page here by hand with no help from the tool it's just a string for the editor so if i make a mistake here in the text in closing the text in the html syntax the editor doesn't know what what i'm doing so will not help me in uh, mar uh, flagging the error or whatever so probably it's better that if we find a, a better an easier way to separate the content of the page from the logic behavior of the website it would be nice if we could save all of this into a separate file okay the end result would be always to return a string but this string instead of writing it here inside the code of the function we pull it out and put it in a separate file so that the website uh, will be cleaner and will be easier to modify the pages separately it turns out that we can do that uh, with the templating edging the jinja templates if you have a look at the structure of the project uh, we have two folders we have the application and two folders static and template flask prepares these two folders and treats them in a specific way static is for static files files that done that don't change that never change like images for example i didn't put the image of the rooster here because i don't know how to, how to do that yet huh? we have to learn that um, if i have an image that i want to include in the page i will put it into the stack static folder and the flask will automatically publish all the files under slash static without uh, i don't need to define a route and a function for each and every image all the folder static is automatically published so this is the po first point and we will put an image there just to show but the second more, more interesting is the template directory where we can put uh, html templates html files or more generally html templates so a template is an html page with some specific plate ho placeholders that will be replaced uh, or substituted at the runtime let's make one step at a time template first uh, so we want to move uh, this html from this very ugly looking uh, string uh, into its separate file 
for doing that we can create a template here which is just an HTML file so inside the template directory we create an HTML file that we can we may call index so it will be index.html and we can paste this content there so the title the body there and you can see that the editor just a very simple thing but the editor is now aware that this is a, an HTML file and will help me hmm? uh, for example if you know if I open a tag uh, it will close it uh, in the, if I add if I want to add some you know some uh, attributes uh, I already have all the help from the editor we are hmm? I can edit here in an HTML context and not in a Python context and so we can just throw away all the string and call the template ask flask to include the template and return as a string the content of the template there is a function for doing that which is called uh, process template no yes where is that sorry I remember process template isn't it ah render template sorry render template in fact this render template function from the flask package can be called here and we can just include the name of the template that we used so right now it's just a convenience function you see this H uh, uh, icon here and the useful because if you click on the icon it will bring you back and forth from the template uh, to the method that uses the template okay so it's cleaner it's easier we will we will always use this method and we want also to create a second page the about page the about us page okay so we go to templates again we create a new page HTML we call it about and uh, we copy something from the other page then we can have uh, the example here was where the slide about us uh, there's some text and so on so the title is h1 about us And then finally, go back to the product page. Hmm? And this about us page will be mapped to a different address. So we need to, to route the about html file 
the about function that we render return render the template about if you try the auto completion the by chance knows where to look and only offers you the list of the files that are in templates so about so right now the website has these two pages index and about you can call each of them so i stop i rerun the server i can call each of them separately index or about no about okay now we want to link them in two ways uh, so we need just to in the about page put a link uh, to the project page so uh, href to index <coughs> and back from index we, we need to put a link to the about page like this so we modify just the HTML with the links, uh, something very easy to do. We reload the project, and now these are links, of course. Hmm? So nothing fancy. Now let's start doing something more dynamic. Um, one problem is that we are in this way hard coding the address of the pages inside the HTML. So if later we want in some way to reorganize the website, uh, you, you will need to change these addresses everywhere. So for example, we want to make it look nicer. So instead of about.html, we only want to call the pages index and about. We change the routing and now the index page the index.html page will be published uh, at the public address just slash index without the dot html extension mm -hmm. it's cleaner restart the website so the index.html will not work anymore but the index without anything will give us this page unfortunately this link doesn't work anymore so it would be nice that all the links internal to the website can automatically adapt or discover which is the right address so that we can modify the publishing location of the different pages without uh, uh, having to up update the contents of every page for doing this we need two ingredients first of all we have uh, one function provided by flask that is called url4 url4 takes as an argument the name of a function remember we say that the name of the page is the function that we define and it will return the route where so the html url the url uh, where this page has been published so for example if i write uh, url for about url for about it will show me this string so we'll convert from the function name that doesn't change to the publishing route which may change at this point freely 
okay so this is one piece of, in of ingredients the problem is that i can call this uh, url uh, url for for example of index uh, here but uh, the address of the index page is not written in this function rather it's in the template so what we want to do is actually to call this function from within the template okay uh, here we have an, an error here because url4 has not been imported yet imported okay so we want to to say that this about page must go to this address whatever it is to the result of the real url4 function and this is where templates uh, are really becoming useful here uh, actually when we put an html file in the templates directory and we call the render template function it's not just read and returned as a string but all the file is read and processed by this ninja 2 templating engine this ninja 2 templating engine and uh, Jinja will uh, look through the HTML file and find some specific markers like in double curly braces or in brace percent uh, placeholders in these two cases it will take the expression and output the results of the expression inside the page in this case we only execute a statement without uh, a python statement without doing anything more if you ever use php it's the same philosophy hmm? except this is a limited language so what it means that we can use this placeholder to call the url4 function inside the template so for example we want to dynamically determine the position of the index page from the about template so instead of hard coding index.html here we can call url4 index what happens is that when this template is being read and processed this placeholder will trigger the templating engine that will execute this function this function will return a value and the return value is inserted here the, these uh, markers are removed and uh, the result of the function of the expression is inserted there so wherever you we have some dynamically changing content you can put it into braces and compute a python expression for the value that should be there hmm? and the same we do for the other page the index uh, will link uh, to the about page this name about is the name of the function of the python function and your four will compute the address for the function so all the links uh, should be mapped in, in this way hmm? so we if we call the website again we have this welcome published at the slash index and smart rooster will be published at slash about and will include the index.html uh, about.html template and so on hmm? so this is the way we create pages and we create links we need to include an image in the first page here and uh, 
before including an image we should include it into this we should paste the file into the static directory hmm? i don't have an image ready so let's uh, search for a rooster yes okay this one i think is nice enough here i can save the image to to my project so i can put it uh, uh, so drive uh, d now where is that users for you can see users PyCharm projects and uh, task example static okay so you see that now the static directory is populated with the, this very nice image And we want to include this image into the uh, index page so we have uh, open a new paragraph uh, for an image whose source is so we want to specify that the image uh, to be included here is a static file so in this case the the why is that uh, url4 function has a different uh, format where you specify that uh, we want the url for a static file so you put static as the first parameter and in the second parameter called the file name you specify the name of the file that you want to include because in the first case it's a dynamic page it links to the name of a function in this case it links to the name of a file an image file usually or CSS file or a JavaScript file a file to be included without being computed without being interpreted in any way okay so it's a bit different so the source of the image will be determined by the, the by the url4 function of a static file whose file name is is this one like that so um, flash already knows that all the static files will be in the static folder so you don't need to, to specify it you just provide the name so you have for, for every link for every address we provide we always use the url for function whether it's for dynamic pages or for static content So in this case, we we'll restart the application and see that the index page now includes this image. And if you have a look at the source, you see that this image has been translated to slash static slash uh, name of the file. But it's all being computed dynamically, so if you want to move the files elsewhere, uh, it all, uh, everything will adapt uh, automatically.
and you can do better with uh, or more interesting things with templates uh, first of all from within a template uh, you can access some variables uh, from the surrounding python code um, we'll see especially the request uh, and and g later when we do something more complex but uh, in uh, the templating language uh, we also have some uh, uh, control statements so you can loop or you can include or exclude parts of the page depending on some condition so there's a small language is not as powerful as python but it's a small language for repeating blocks of uh, html or for excluding or including parts of the page depending on some condition and it's also possible to where's the example okay to include to use uh, an expression that refers to the variables that we have uh, or some parameters that we have uh, in the html if you want a full list uh, of statements uh, or expressions are on these two pages hmm? so the, a very long list uh, of, uh, of of statements uh, and uh, and uh, and console that we can use uh, to customize the page okay so this is the fir uh, first a second uh, you know more powerful uh, information that we can we will use later is uh, the routing so right now just to make it's clear where, I, where i'm trying to go we have a very powerful system that is only doing very stupid things okay it's including a couple of static files we want to add some user interaction to be able to enter data to change the content and so on for doing that we, we must be able first uh, to make the templates more intelligent okay right now we already are they are already able to adapt to the urls but it's not very useful yes it's useful but it's not uh, doesn't give us uh, real user interactivity hmm? we want to add something more and we know that we have expressions and statements uh, in the ginger language at the same time we must have uh, addresses with parameters so if you want to send some value if you want to get the username and so on the url will be dynamic because it will contain the name of the user taken from a form or whatever and so the route syntax uh, can be improved up to now we, we said okay every page uh, is routed to a function the general form is uh, that every function is being routed by a set of different addresses for example if you put this uh, syntax with the uh, angular braces all the pages pages that start with slash user and are followed by any identifier will be all mapped to this function all of them and the actual username which is john or jeff or paul or whatever you put here will be passed as a parameter to this function so in a way you can have a whole family of pages that behave in the same way that because they are handled by the same function but uh, that are par that have a parameter no? that you can play upon this is for example one one type of url like that it will call the, you don't need to route specifically this url user full view you only route user slash something and all the somethings will be routed to the same function we will make very strong use of this uh, in the in the rest applications hmm? and you can also restrict the type of value 
that you expect uh, from this pattern matching for example you may say that the slash post slash a number but this number should be integer so you can prefix the, na the name of the parameter with the int or float or a path to tell flask which kind of uh, patterns you, you should look for okay so you can have a function where in this case you are sure that you are receiving an integer number and you can also generate these addresses with the url4 function so because you want to close the loop to make the links to the different pages so if uh, you have a route that is user slash something when you create a url for the profile page profile is the name of the page you should also specify that the parameter username is in this case john doe and uh, the url for will therefore create this address of course if you don't specify username this url will be incomplete uh, and will not match uh, the route uh, uh, pattern hmm? so we may have uh, families of uh, pages imagine i don't know a content manager system where, where you have a blog huh? where you have many articles each article is a different blog post each article which will have its name its name or its number but for every article you will call always the same function post blog post blog post slash one blog post slash two slash three and so on we will do the same and if you want to link from one post to another you can create a link in this way so we have a family of different uh, uh, uh different par parameterized addresses um, another addition and we need all these pieces for doing some in user interaction is to specify to the route uh, methods which kind of uh, http requests uh, will be handled by that method usually when you click on a link uh, that will create uh, a, an http get command so you see it here get get hmm? so every time you click on a link or include an image uh, the browser sends a get command to the server and the server will just receive the file when we send data so when we fill a form and send some data and a different method is used uh, which is called post hmm? uh, to send data from the browser to the server and if we want to post some data we can specify one or more methods that this route should match and should route to the specific function so what happens if we want to do we still have time yes start uh, some interact interaction on this website so let's start with this let we let the user it's a very rudimentary login system it's not even a login uh, enter a name and submit and we create a welcome page where it will tell me you to, or will you show my name and welcome me individually okay so how can we do that we need to modify the index page to include this form here and create a welcome page that will process this data okay so the first part is very easy it's just html we go to the index page and after the nice image but before the copyright we insert the form element
form element form in HTML is a tag for that uh, brackets the limits a part of the page where individual interactive elements can be included it doesn't show anything but it specifies two different uh, properties one is uh, how this form is sent to the server in this case we always use post could be get some forms can also be sent by get but we try to avoid that because get will show all the parameters on the on the url and we don't like it and second is the action action is the name of the page that will be called the when posting when submitting the, the form and in this case of course it will be a, a url for a page that doesn't exist yet we call it welcome we still have to create this page so when the user will submit this form all the data will be sent to the welcome page and what is this data well we just have to copy here enter your name paragraph paragraph enter name and uh, after the name we want to provide a text field input type equal to text name equal to username so every interactive element in a form can be shown differently can be a text arrow can be a button can be a checkbox can be but they all have a name and a value the name is specified here the value will be provided by the user so all the html all the form elements we can think them as a dictionary a dictionary that maps names to value to values okay and in fact it will be mapped to a python dictionary later on and the second input which is easier which is a submit button and we want to change the value of this button uh, which is the text that is written on the button itself uh, login for example so in this case we have a si very simple form with one parameter this is shown in the login page here no it isn't because uh, of course because we we use a route that doesn't exist yet so so we need at least to define it So let's try to start it again. Okay, it doesn't cry anymore. So now the index has this form, the input text and the input submit element. When we click on login, this form, the data of this form is sent to the welcome page, slash welcome page. The action of the form determines where the data is sent. And slash welcome is mapped to this welcome function. So what can we do here? We can extract the values that the user provided from another object that uh, Flask will provide us that is called request. Request request contains all the information about the HTTP request that just came in and in particular 
we can exploit the username from the form attribute of the request request.form is a dictionary that contains all the data provided by the user and from this dictionary we want to extract the username key the, the value corresponding to the key username okay so this username here is the key of the dictionary that must must match the name of the input element because it's the name by which this information is being encoded through the http request it is embedded in the uh, request object and you can extract it by querying this form dictionary which is populated automatically by um, by flask we don't need to do anything and we can store this username in a python variable okay uh, just one modification we i need to say that this welcome is uh, will be called uh, with the methods post hmm? otherwise you will assume that they will call you with get and will, that will not be executed so at that point we can create a, a template for the welcome page so we can create a new template welcome we copy the title here and in the body we say welcome to the project and then i want to include the name here right welcome to the project full view i can do that by entering an expression username for example or let's call it just name just to show different i can so i can use some variables into the template as long as uh, i inject those variables from the python code when i call the template and it's very easy to inject a variable because we just have to render template the name of the template is uh, about and we specify that we want to inject a parameter called name and the value of this parameter is our username python variable so what we are doing is to get the username key from the form extract the value which is hopefully the name of the user and this value inject is a, as a named object a variable inside the template and so the template will use it or may use it in the placeholders so that's my not my confusion this username is this python variable this name is the template variable yeah yes yes definitely yeah thank you okay so let's see what it works I reload it again again reload this page enter my name and click on login and magically or pythonically the name has been interpolated inserted into the template of course we have miles to go okay we must check whether the name is valid whether it's not empty and do a lot of uh, you know, different uh, controls before we can trust it but the basic mechanism the basic the very basics is here it's just uh, this couple of uh, 
of statements so you see that uh, um, flask already handles all the low level stuff for us uh, and it allows us to reason in terms of the templates of the pages how they link to each other and uh, the information that we can provide uh, re really I, I should not just render template the welcome here I should first check whether the username is not empty and if it's empty maybe I should go to an error page and only if it's not empty and valid I can go there but this is just a Python function I can go I can do whatever I want here hmm? uh, one last point but it will only take one minute is that this website is fantastic eh? but the home page the real home page the slash still has uh, the old uh, um, hello world text i would like to map this index page onto the real root of the website okay i could change the route of course i could edit it but uh, here I want to show how to make a, a redirection of a page so when a page is called actually the server will tell the browser please call another page redirect the browser the user to a different page mm -hmm. and this can be done if I remember here very simple return instead of returning a render template we return a redirect and specify the URL where we want to redirect to. Again, redirect is a method in the Flask package. So redirect. And so we can redirect the home page to the address of the index function. Yeah, why are you crying for this? URL4, we are using, ah, because I remember, so I removed it. URL4, okay. So in this case, when I restart the application, I can click directly to this address that I, I, I wasn't doing before. And it will give me the index page. And you saw what happened on the server first the browser asked for a slash for the real the root of, of the website and the server responded with a 302 302 is a temporary redirect code and inside the response there will the, the, the server also included the new address which is slash index that the browser duly requested one millisecond after so actually we are making two requests the first for the root uh, and the server say will reply yes the root will be redirected to the, that other address and the browser will request that address and from there on everything is uh, as it was before hmm? okay so these are the basic steps uh, of course we need to uh, do something a bit more complex in order to be able to for example validate the login of the user with respect to a database uh, and uh, modify the content of the page whether the user is logged in or out and so on but uh, for handling uh, the state uh, of the navigation for example whether the user is logged or not uh, whether it's activated or not some functionality we need uh, to add two different uh, two new let's say technologies one is linking to the database and the second is navigation sessions sessions means remembering the state of what happened before so that will be our job for next week okay any questions too many questions okay so we can play with this for the next few days and then we continue in making it something useful thank you